there are many of us who still remember a simpler time. Those of us who have lived before running water, lights that flip with a switch, and telephones that clip to our hip. Through the past century, we've seen many advances and changes take place because of the freedoms afforded us. The freedoms we enjoy and the conveniences they offer us are only available because we live in a country with one of the greatest democracies ever known. The United States has become the standard by which other democracies are measured, and elder Americans have shown their commitment to the democratic process many times. Voting is perhaps the single most important element to any democracy. As experienced voters, we bring a sense of privilege and responsibility to voting. We know that without the people's involvement through voting, there can be no democracy. North Dakota has a long history of fair and open elections. North Dakota is the only state without voter registration. The requirements to vote in North Dakota are, you must be a U.S. citizen, you must be at least 18 years old, you must be a legal resident of North Dakota, and a resident in the precinct in which you will be voting 30 days prior to the election. Remember, for the purposes of voting, a person may have only one residence. How you determine your residence is easy. Just observe the following rules. A residence is the place where you live. It is the home you consider your permanent residence. You can only have one residence. You cannot lose a place of residence until another is gained. When you move, Vote in the precinct of your new residence if you've lived there for 30 days prior to the election. If you move to a new home in the state less than 30 days prior to an election, you may vote in your previous precinct, either in person or by absentee ballot. <laughs> so the big election's next week. Are you voting? Actually, I'm not just voting. I plan to serve as a clerk at one of the polling sites. I just received my training last week. Really? I wished I could do that. But till I drive back to Inkster to vote, I think I won't have enough time. Inkster? But I thought you lived in Dickinson. But I've always voted in Inkster. I've only lived in Dickinson a couple of years. Well, according to my training that I just received, you should vote in the place that you currently live, as long as it's been 30 days or more. Really? Yes, but if you have questions, you should call the county auditor's office. And if you really are interested in being a poll worker, well, now that you won't be driving all that way to Inkster, I suggest you ask them questions on that and they'll be able to answer all of that. Great idea, I think I'll be doing that. There have been a lot of changes during our lifetime, many of which have made our lives easier, more secure. In 2003, the legislature passed laws requiring North Dakota citizens be asked to present identification when voting. Acceptable forms of identification with residential addresses include a valid North Dakota driver's license, a valid North Dakota state identification card, valid federally issued identification card, passport, a valid agency identification card, Valid Tribal Government Issued Identification Card Valid Student Identification Card Valid United States Military Identification Card Utility Bill dated 30 days prior to Election Day with name and residential address Letter from a federal agency such as Medicare or Medicaid Or a Change of Address Verification Letter from the U.S. Postal Service. Make sure your identification includes a street address because you can't live in a post office box no matter how great the rent is. If you do not have one of the forms of identification listed above, don't worry. You are still able to vote if an election poll worker knows you and chooses to vouch for you, or you can complete a voter's affidavit on which you certify under oath your identity and that you are eligible to vote in that precinct. 
Well, hello, Shirley. How are those grandbabies? Just great, Gladys. Getting bigger every day. Is this your grandson? Yes. This is Jacob's boy. Tim, this is an old family friend, Shirley Jenkins. She changed your father's diapers. <laughs> I'm sure he loved that. How is staying with Grandma? Not bad. I love having her home cooking. May I see your IDs, please? Oh. Um, I'm sure I put my wallet in here when I left home, but it's not in here. Does that mean I have to run home to get it? I'd be glad to vouch for you, Gladys. Thank you. Uh, I didn't know I needed my ID. Oh, aren't we a sorry pair? Could you vouch for Tim also? I'd rather you fill out a voter's affidavit, Tim. I feel a little uncomfortable vouching for you since I don't really know you. I hope you understand. What's an affidavit do? It's really simple. It's a legal document that you sign your name and address. It confirms that you are who you say you are, and it confirms that you have the right to vote in this precinct. Okay. Sign your name here, write your address, and Gladys, you may take your ballot from John over there. Well, thanks, Shirley. Take care. You too, Gladys. Is this okay? Looks perfect. Nice to meet you, Tim. You may grab your ballot as well. Take care of your grandma. Polling locations across the state may look very similar. Machines that read your vote choices marked on your ballot, known as ballot scanners, are used at every polling site. There is also an accessible voting device, which anyone can use. The ballot scanner will not only be as private as traditional ballot boxes, but is also able to quickly count your votes and alert you if you have made an error, such as overvoting, which is voting for too many candidates for an office. If you make an error on your ballot, you can get a replacement ballot. When you are done voting, Simply take the ballot to the ballot scanner in your secrecy sleeve. It's easy to insert the ballot into the scanner. However, if you have any trouble, there is always someone available to ask for help. Don't forget to stay back a few feet if someone is ahead of you at the scanner. This shows respect for their privacy and for yours. The accessible voting device is available for anyone to use and is especially helpful for voters who may have difficulty voting with a pen and a paper ballot. There are many ways to use the accessible voting device. Options available include voting by touchscreen or keypad, using headphones for audio, and large print and high contrast options, just to name a few. Remember the accessible voting device is available to anyone and it can be especially helpful to those who have trouble reading a paper ballot, holding a pen, or those who just like to use technology. For more information on any part of the voting process, contact your county auditor. They can be found in the county government section of your phone book. While the look of the polling sites and the process of voting may have changed a bit, some things haven't changed, like many of the voting laws that affect you. Here's a review. Residency. A residence is the place where you live. If you are called away from your residence temporarily for any reason, such as hospitalization, you still have the right to vote as a citizen of North Dakota in the precinct where you live. If you are a snowbird, but consider North Dakota your permanent residence, then you have the right to vote in North Dakota. If you continue to vote in North Dakota, you must not vote elsewhere. If you remain in North Dakota, but move from one precinct to another, after living in the new precinct for 30 days, you may vote in the new precinct. For the integrity of the voting process, it is important that your vote is counted where you live, no matter how interesting the issues are somewhere else. Absentee voting. If you are away from your North Dakota residence during an election, or if you prefer not to vote at a polling site, you can fill out an application to vote absentee. In North Dakota, voters don't need a reason to vote absentee. It's an option available to every voter. You can get an absentee ballot application from your county auditor, or you can visit the Secretary of State's website. If you so choose, or if you are unable, 
you may have someone pick up an absentee ballot on your behalf. The application will ask the following information. Your name, your North Dakota residential address, your mailing address, your home telephone number, the election you are requesting the ballot for, an affirmation that you have resided in the precinct for at least 30 days, and of course you must sign it. Mail, deliver, or fax the completed application to your county auditor. You can find the county auditor's phone number and address in the government section of your local phone book. You may receive your absentee ballot as early as 40 days before the election. If you are unable to fill out your ballot, you can have someone assist you. Hi, Julie. I just got my absentee ballot in the mail today. Do you think you could make it over here this week to help me out? Did you ask Dad? Well, I was hoping you would help. You know your father in politics. He'll probably fill it out the way he thinks, not necessarily the way I want it marked. Yeah, you're probably right. How about if I come over Thursday night? Sounds perfect. We can do it over tea. See you then. The absentee ballot must be returned to the county auditor prior to the election. If you mail in your ballot, make sure it is postmarked no later than the day before the election. Any ballot postmarked the day of the election or after the election cannot be accepted. Early voting. Some counties in North Dakota offer early voting. Each county is responsible for determining if early voting will be available. You can find out if your county will offer early voting by calling the county auditor. Nursing Home If you are living in a nursing home and consider it your permanent address, you vote in the precinct where the nursing home is located. If you are in a nursing home for a lengthy recovery process but maintain your home, you vote in the precinct of your permanent home address. These changes make the voting process simple, secure, and more accessible for everyone. If you have been denied the right to vote or have experienced undue difficulty casting a ballot for an election, you may file a complaint with the Secretary of State's office. A complaint may also be filed if your access to the polling site was denied or if you feel you could not complete your ballot in private. Voting is the foundation of democracy, and like the world around us, it too has undergone some changes. Luckily, like the television remote control, coffee makers, and the microwave, voting improvements are making life easier for us. There's no denying the importance of the elder American vote. Now all that's left is for us to continue our commitment to the process and get out and vote. Let your voice be heard.